So Mila here, um, he's very gifted because um, a lot of girls have trouble growing the glutes. So with her glutes, um, she's less like myself and our glutes grow pretty easily. So I'm actually able to take her through a pretty hardcore quad workout and I actually split her up. Um, being a taller competitor, I've got to split her quads and hamstring workouts up and obviously I target the glutes in both those areas too. So what I like to do is something I've been doing since um, right when I was 18, 19, uh, facial stretch training, okay? So I bring up weaker muscle groups. Because she's a taller competitor, we've got to make sure her limbs are nice and filled out, okay? So what I like to do is I like to fill the muscle full of blood uh, to pre-fatigue. Um, we hit seven sets um, of leg extension, 12 reps, 30 seconds break. The first 20 seconds, we go down for either a deep stretch or an isometric hold, depending on what I feel like that day. Um, the trick is what we're trying to do is we're always trying to stretch the fascia out, okay? So a fascia is a layer around the muscle that restricts blood from getting in there, okay? So um, the more we stretch that, the more muscle growth potential we have, okay? So in these sets, in between the sets, I'm trying to stretch them out as much as we can, and we can channel the blood flow coming in with these fast rest times and high amounts of volumes in these reps. So um, keep up with us today. Seven sets, 30 seconds break. So next up, um, move the squats. Uh, really pre the quads, really stretch them out. Um, a lot of blood flow in there. She's wobbling over here a little bit. Um, uh, you'll notice as well, um, fluids are very important, okay? Especially in those kind of sets, because when we're trying to pump as much blood as we can into the muscle, um, we, we, when we talk about blood and we're trying to channel it in, our blood's made of 75% water. So make sure you're, you're getting a shitload of water in. Um, if you're lucky enough like her, she's allowed to have some sugars, some simple carbohydrates. Again, just for glycogen repair as well um, during the sets. Um, but if we're dieting, whatever it is, um, depending on the athlete, we just want to be making sure that we're getting plenty of water in, and if we can, some sort of carbohydrate. Um, being a bikini competitor, you won't see many bikini competitors smashing down 50 grams of carbs during their sessions, but she's worked hard for it, so that's why she's still strong, still lifting big weights, and even those high, high volume exercises, she's still lifting a lot of weight, okay? So our metabolic rate is gonna be highly increased when it comes to those kind of things as well, so it sets her standard and a heart rate at a set level throughout the rest of the workout. So the intensity is very, very high, so that's why we can move someone like squats. She's warmed up, she's primed, heart rate's up, adrenaline's pumping, we've got to go for some heavy squats. So next up, we got split squats. Um, great movement because you can channel into any kind of part of the move, um, probably any part of the leg. Sorry, so quad, hamstring, glute, depending on where you channel your leg, depending where you're leaning. Um, again, we're trying to work these tines for the outer part of a quad and glute. 
good tie into the hamstrings as well. So what I've got her doing here is we're going to have one leg back, one leg forward. Um, it's just one continuous set of 40 reps, okay? But it's 10 reps and then a drop set. So we're always going to hit 10, 10, 10, and then 10 on the body weight. On the 10th rep is a static hold uh, halfway up. So we're kind of keeping the glute under tension, a bit of a cluster set. Um, so that's every 10th rep. So on every drop set, we'll be doing a static hold for 10 seconds as well. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of pain. I'm using apparatus here. Um, there's a foam roll under her back. So what we're doing is we're trying to put her back at a different angle because she is a bit taller. Um, but I use it with most girls anyway. Uh, it's to stop the, roll, the lower back from rolling out underneath. Also puts a lot more channel through the glute ham tie-in. Um, again, so you see the angle of what she's sitting, she'll be sitting at a steeper angle, okay? So when she drives through the heels, her heels are more, her feet are more flexated, therefore she's gonna get a bigger stretch to her hamstrings and glutes when she comes to the bottom of the movement. Now as we're pressing up, you'll notice I've got a band here, the resistance band, so now we're channeling from the bottom those areas so her lower back doesn't kick in. Because we've got the band, and, and as the resistance gets stronger um, as we press up, she really ought to isolate the outside of a sweep, okay? So again, being a taller competitor, we want to make sure muscles are popping at all times. So we're really trying to target that outer sweep. So if she has it on stage, it doesn't look like she's got you know, stick legs when we dive down, okay? We're going to try, to try and keep it nice and full, okay? So we're really targeting every part of the leg here because she's pretty fried but towards the end of the workout. Um, and yeah, just recapping. Trying to get to the bottom there, so we're activating the glutes and hamstrings. So we're driving up from the bottom and taking over with a quad dominant press as we get stop the hack squat. Three more. Move it up. Now, when she trains with me as well, because of her metabolism, I've got her metabolism working on fire. So um, she doesn't have any time to either, so she gets pancakes and toast after she, she trains with me. She actually gets my exact pre-contest diet meal, you guys would have seen in my old videos, my pancakes and uh, jam and, and toast, um, directly after she trains. She actually goes across the road and says, I'll get the usual. So when I tell her this, just watch her face light up, because she's at the stage now where she really fucking hates it. So just, just watch her face light up. Hey Miller. Give your pancakes up, please. <laughs> the best. See, I told you she'd smile. <laughs> told you she'd smile, look, look. She's gone from dying, now she's ready to do another set. See? She wants to get her last set over and done with because she goes gets the usual. <laughs> So we're stretching through the rear delt. Elbow up high. My thumb is down and my pinky is up. I'm pulling through that way. I 
and then you'll lose control to your wrist. I don't usually have to grab the wrist, I never grab here, but I'll just guide. Good spotting technique when it comes to uh, pressing. Depending on how much weight you're using and the athlete, you find a lot of people when they're pressing, they tend to cave in. So if you grab under the wrist, it's awkward because they're still going to hold it with the wrist. I like to actually slide my hands in between the dumbbell and the wrist. So it's just like a support barrier there to so stop them from actually caving in. Sometimes they only really need just a, just a slight guidance to stop them from caving in. They've got the muscle to push up, but they're still in that mindset of trying to touch the dumbbells together. That's on a separate occasion, but I don't agree with touching dumbbells together. They shouldn't be coming up uh, straight in line with the shoulder. Okay, so when you're trying to touch the dumbbells together, you can tend to cave in. So that's where I come out the middle part and guide it from stopping in. There it is, good, coming in. So starting off today with Amy, um, she didn't have a lot of trouble through her uh, scaps, uh, rhomboids and traps. Um, takes, it, takes over a lot more when it comes to her redel work. Okay, so starts to do more of a pull rather than a, um, a lateral raise. Okay, so what I did today was really pre-fatigue that area with the cable, um, and we actually did some more partial movements towards the end. Um, so she's only recruiting that rear delt. Okay, so uh, we like to you know pre-fatigue that, get that nice and activated. That way she's nice and warm with that area. Now we're going to a shoulder press, um, the typical dumbbell shoulder press. Again, very, very basic. With me, it's always basic. Um, what I'm teaching her today as well is to control the movement on the way down, okay? So she can generate that power from the bottom. So her feet position will be hard on the ground, okay? But she's treating it as a lat pull down as she's coming into the movement, okay? So what that's gonna do is, what that's gonna do is it's going to slow down the movement. She's gonna feel the weight, but it's also causing a cushion through her back and upper back to know what the weight is, okay? So when it gets to that point, your body acts as a spring, all your back muscles contracted and makes you want to explode up, okay? When you're doing that, you just gotta make sure your feet are underneath your ass, so you're generating a nice power platform to drive from the ground up to your shoulders into the sky. All right, last set. On the knee. Look up hard. Yeah, it's there. Okay, here we go. Come on, 10 on. Two. Your way, come on. Yeah, finished up with Amy, so she's now five weeks out from the WBFF, her debut. Um, yeah, we mostly worked, obviously, her shoulders today. Uh, she's had some, uh, as I said before, some scap retraction problems, so we start the rear delts first, warm them up, move to a shoulder press. Now, she still saw the other day from her tricep workout, um, so we kind of limited the pressing today towards the end. Uh, we threw in seven sets, um, the facial stress training that I, I like to preach. Um, so we're still doing the heavy overload stuff, but we threw some uh, extra volume in there to target her side delts. Every girl can't have enough cap on her shoulders. Um, we also did it as well, so we stopped pre-fatiguing through the triceps, which are already weak at the moment as well. So as soon as we hit that, we finished up with a superset of a machine press and some uh, face balls. Again, because her triceps um, aren't as fatigued now, because her side delts have taken over, and doing those high rope pulls, her scaps are already nice and warmed up. We're not gonna get any pain, niggles, or um, you know, aggravations from before so we can really finish off and finalize the touch up on the whole shoulder, front to back. All right. I put this guy through the pain, he's uh, 63. He just won't fuck off. I just, I try to, I try to destroy him every session. He's still here. He's still fucking here, so. I love him. He, um, he comes in, uh, Five days a week, rain, hail, or shine. He likes to have a drink. He'll come in 
finishing the night at two o'clock and still hit legs. So, as I say, you know, I, I don't want people to the best genetics or, you know, whatever it is, bodybuilders, I want people to train the hardest. So, he, um, he has a very busy lifestyle, very social lifestyle, but, you know, he's, he's lost probably 30 kegs working with me. And um, we've still kept his lifestyle on balance. You, know, you don't have to be a competitor. Um, we just work around him and what he, what his, you know, lifestyle needs. He travels a lot. You know, he's a very successful entrepreneur. Um, and I use him as a bit of a business coach myself. So you know, you got to be surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Um, I'm not really a pisshead like he is, but you know, other than that, you know, we got the same same news and views. So uh, we're taking him to some back today. Um, the main thing we've tried to fix up with Bob is just his overall form. You know, his intensity has been great and he's been picking up over the last year, but his form started to lack a little bit just from getting a bit too excited. So we're just refining a little bit, we're taking things back a step um, and we're going to hit uh, some back today. So we're going to start on some sort of width movement um, and take him to some uh, assisted rolling movements after this. So he goes hard. He goes hard. So now we worked a bit of width um, to start him off the upper thicker lat. Um, I find everyone's biggest trouble uh, isn't actually isolating the lower lat. It's a very common problem, but um, I find the biggest one before that is actually recruiting your scaps and mid trap. Um, what happens is the people start to rotate forward and start to try and pull to the lower lat and start rotating forward this way. And we really need to be focusing on pulling back the whole time. Okay, so. Um, we're trying to always lead with our traps first. So even if we are trying to target our lower lats or upper lats or rhomboids, rear delts, whatever, we've got to make sure our traps and scaps are locked into play. Okay, so our chest is up and our shoulders are locked back. So this movement's great because it can target that. Even though it's still targeting through the lower lats, we're still squeezing up through the new trap as well. Okay, jump forward and grab for as well. See his elbows are pinching back first. He's really targeting through that upper lat. Sorry, lower, lower trap area. Go, Bob, come on. Strong, Bob, strong, come on. with some glute activation work. Um, Vic's quads are very overdominant in her body. So we really gotta be careful because even though you know guys know I like to squat heavy, deadlift heavy, that kind of stuff, um, if she's too dominant in one area, um, it's just gonna overcompensate. So we went to heavy squats. She just feels for her quads and every girl wants um, a nice toned bum. So uh, what I'm trying to really do today is is pre-fatigue through the glutes and hamstrings. Okay, so um, we start off today with some uh, adductor work, uh, super set that eventually. Uh, we did a few intensity sets, max sets, and we did the adductor work again. Same machine, just different tempos. To super set that with um, some uh, split squats that I did before with uh, Miller earlier in the day. Um, except we're doing more straight sets and we're going for a deeper pause down the bottom so she really activates the bottom of the glute. 
Uh, then we shift into some inside work there, so the uh, abductor, oh sorry, adductor, we did the abductor before, we, we moved to the adductor, so same machine, just different um, different styles, so we're squeezing in ways, so we're working the inside of the leg. We actually did a tri set of that, okay, so we went from that into a hamstring curl, okay, so we're working from the inside into the meat of the hamstring, and then finishing off with an overall mass builder, which was uh, the dumbbell stiff leg, where we're kind of tying everything together, so we're tying in the adductors, abductors, hamstrings and glutes as well. So we're kind of pre-fatiguing everything, so we join it all together, we know where to feel. Now we're gonna finish on some uh, basic leg movements here for hamstrings just to kind of finish off, get that last bit of blood in there uh, before we move some heavy pressing. What I got doing here, these sets, start of the set, so it's a static hold, okay? So as she's holding, she's flexing under the load. The blood is just gonna be rushing in, okay? It's under tension, it's under a lot of a lot of pain and agony, the body wants to survive, so the body's going to send all the blood it possibly can to that area uh, to help with the recovery phase straight away. So that's what we're going to do. We're trying to trick in the body here. We're keeping it under tension there, okay? So we're creating that blood flow, so when she goes to open up and start her reps, all the blood flow will just gash on in um, and it'll create big fatigue and a lot of pain through. So, yeah, I'm all about pain. Letting it up. 10 reps, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, that was one. Come on, come on, let's go. Two, three, four, five, six, good breathing. Seven, good breathing. Vic today is a variation hack squat. So because Vic is very dominant on quads, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the glute ham tie-in uh, to really appear, okay? So the good thing about this is, is that when you put the pad underneath your shoulders, it puts you back in a steeper alignment, so you get a better stretch to the glutes and hamstrings. Now, what I'm actually doing with her is a little bit extra. So, because her quads take over still, even from that movement, you're gonna have to put this block underneath her toes. When you put the block underneath your toes and on top of the angle of flexion with the pad under the back, as you come deeper and deeper on this squatting movement, it allows you to stretch up through the glute and hamstring a lot more, therefore targeting that area a lot more. Without putting any extra strain on the lower back, because we're on assisted hack squat here, so it's pushing her lower back so it's nice and tight into play pushing her knees nice and wide, so she's only really targeting through the glute hamstring tie-in, and if any of her quad does pick up, it's only the very outer sweep, okay, which, like anyone, can't too much outer sweep, okay, so, yeah, this kind of variation is very good um, for anyone, really, uh, lower back problems, knee problems, really, really assist with all that, but mostly it helps with the strength through your glute and ham tie-in, which really a lot of people neglect and cause a lot of back trouble and knee trouble too, so make sure you never neglect that glute hamstring area. Yeah, because um, she obviously makes the appointments when Chris, the videographer, comes in. And she makes all the appointments for my clients. So it's just funny, it's a coincidence that she just happens to be on the majority of my, my training videos. It's because she's losing more weight, she's gaining more muscle, and she wants to show off a bit. So, yeah, she's got a game face on today. She's got the shits. I, I think I've done something wrong.